Hi, it's Denise from Four Square Micro Farm. And it's so funny that the moment I turn on the camera, here's Jewel trying to get into my lap. Say hi, Jewel. Okay, so I just took the Jacob off the loom. And uh, I think I mentioned it in the Jacob video. I know I posted it on Facebook where there were some of the heddles that were turned the wrong direction. So that was really a bit of a nerve wracking weave. So I just finished taking off the, the heddles off all four shafts and making sure they were all turned in the right direction. So anyway, at this point, there's no excuse. And now the Angora is going onto the loom. Now I, I have my planning project worksheet and I make these out for each project or what I have been doing, especially for the bags, uh, one of these is a bag. For the bags, what I did was make up a generic sheet so that every time I made a bag uh, or that particular pattern on the bag, I knew exactly what the warp was going to be because just a generic, this is the length, this is the width that you need. So it doesn't, I don't need a new project uh, page every time I do that. But the each individual different project does have a bag. And so uh, maybe last year I wrote a blog post about the warping closet. And what the warping closet is, I like to warp several things at a time. Now, hang on, I'm just going to reach down and get this off the floor. I like to warp several things at a time. And for the most part, it's because my warping board is hanging on the wall and I really don't want to stand around warping. And it's not like there's a lot of room in this house for that kind of thing. There's something pushed up against every wall. So there's open space, but really no wall space. I guess I could hang it on the back of the back beam of the loom. That's a thought. I might do that and I could drop the hair spill drops from the back so it can be warped from back to front. And so there is enough room for me to hang it on the back of the hair spill. So maybe that is what I'll do. But anyway, what I normally do is I warp four or yes, I warp four or five projects at one time. And then I take the warps, chain them. I store them with their papers into the bags. And so I have the bag of Angora that needs to be warped. And I don't know what in the world this is. Let's find out what this is. I want to say that this is a fin. Oh, sometime before Tour de Fleece, I sat down and spun all of the Jacob for this project. And I still have quite a few bit left inside. There was seven, 800 yards. Might have been more than that. And then I spun up a ton of something else. So the whole month before that was taken up with carding wool, uh, washing and then carding and then uh, spinning and now weaving. So pretty much that's how my cycle works because I'm doing a lot of weaving. I don't go from project to project like I used to when I was just knitting. I'd spin up for that project right then and there. These guys take some planning and so what I do is, is think about four or five projects I might want, calculate the yardage with the chart, and I spin up a bunch of yarn to sp spin for however long it takes, month, week, whatever. Sometimes it you know, takes longer than other. And then bag it all up and tag it and then warp it all and then put it back in the bags with the warp chains. So what is this guy? Oh, yeah, I'm really thinking this is. I still can't tell what it is. I'm gonna have to take it completely out the bag. Yep, this is Finn. Okay, so this goes here. And there's not a total on this bag. There is um, a tag, just a little quick rip off tag. Now, you know what I do, I have real tags. See, I really do have real tags and I have even more real tags that are on my spinning journal, the spinning journal pages. Uh, I just don't tag things I really need to. And so um, they're just kind of stuck. But I'm, I'm thinking from the Facebook post that there was 1,400 yards of the fin here. Uh, but I, I mean, you'll know when I actually 
go ahead and do the fin. So here's the Angora with the tags. This is giant Angora fiber, 220 yards um, from Casper, I think was his name. This is giant Angora yarn, and actually, it should go the other way around. This is um, 220, and this is 512. That tag belongs to this, they have the wrong tags. Squished up next to them. Okay, then this is something random from something I spun like six, no, maybe a year ago, it was more than six months ago, about a year ago, spun that up, and that, that came from Ansel, or it might have even come from the opal. I don't have a lot of Rufus in my opals, in the chestnut colored by uh, Angora, so it could have been either one of them. And then, there's this one right here. This one right here. Oh, there it is. I was looking for this. This is my German skein from the group I had for shearing. And this is from the Lilac Tort. Okay, so this is the yarn I'm going to use. And I'm just going to do a random pattern. And let's see what it says here. Watch this. I'm just going to do a random warping. It's not going to be a particular pattern. Okay, so the gray and blue, both from the giant, and then the, we'll see about the German. And it tells me that my set is 10. It's going to be roughly 15 inches. I'm expecting some shrinkage. So I'll warp 18 inches, and that should give me 180 ends. And I might just add a little bit more, because this is... This isn't a scarf, and it's not quite a shawl. And then the reed, I'm gonna slay direct warping. One, two, three, four. Okay, number of shafts. This is gonna be a one, three, twelve. Each of my, uh, my project length is 110, and then 115 with the hems and fringes, uh, fringes extra for shrinkage. And then the warp take up 10%. Front loom waist. I get about four inches to the front loom. I mean, I can get pretty close, but that back is where I really get the waist at. And what I'll probably do for the back is to um, put a warp on this. I think, is it called a supplemental warp? I can't remember what it's called, but you know how you put a warp onto the back and then you just tie everything to that warp. And so, uh, I have to make it long enough for about 14 inches that it'll bring the hand spun through the heddles and into um, into the reed. So I might do that. And I was like, oh, that's going to be tedious cutting up that many strings and tying it back there. But it would be a lot, it will be a lot less trouble than losing, you know, 10 inches worth of hand spun uh, to the back of the loom. Okay, so anyway... So I add that on there, total warp length, 120, and I might even go a little longer than that. And it gives me how many, and we all hope my calculations are correct. So then calculate how much warp I need, 594 yards. I'll round that up to 600, as I usually do. And then for the width, it tells me how many I need, and that doesn't quite seem right. Uh, so I need to take a peek and see what I did over there. Because usually if you need more warp than you weft, well, at least I usually do. So anyway, or maybe that's fine. But at any rate, that tells me I need about um, 1,400 yards of Angora, which I clearly have. This one scan all by itself is 510 yards. So the one scan by itself covers the yardage for that. Okay, enough talking. Now it's time for me to warp, and I will get back to the video process 
once I've got it warped and I'm about ready to start. I'm warping now and getting a little extra glow here from the light. Make sure you see that. Okay, this is something that's really simple, but I didn't realize till very recently. Okay, um, these are the kind of heddles I have on the Harris field. And I'm not even sure exactly what to call them, but you can see that there is one edge that is turned out, one edge that is flat. Those are they're kind of twisted. Um, they're not like the inserted eye that's open. And so, um, you, know, you kind of have that sort of twisted ellipse shape. And what I was doing is when I'm threading from front to back, even back to front a few times I've done that. I was sticking the um, the yarn in when the heddles were turned straight, which is fine, you know. But what I was doing is I was coming from this side here and then sticking it through. And as you can see what that does, it creates a little hitch. Okay, and it turns my yarn slightly in kind of an off direction. And that means that I was putting unnecessary strain on the yarn. Let's see if you can see how that kind of twists out. Okay, now, as opposed to this one right here, where the yarn comes off straight, instead of having that little bent hitch right there. What I didn't realize was that it had to do with the way I was putting the yarn into the heddles. For this one right here, I turned the heddle towards me. This is the raised side, this is the low side, and stuck it in from back to front instead of having it sideways and fishing it in from front to back. Let me see if I can show you that with one hand. Okay, I was doing it this way. The heddle was turned this way, and I was sticking it in from here and putting it through so that it came in contact with the, the edge right here, and it would scrape across there. You know, And, and it, I never really broke any threads that way, but what happened was I would get the heddles all caught up, and I'd have to stop and... And, and pull them and mess around. And that kind of slowed down my weaving. Oh, sorry about that. All right, now, instead, they really should go in from the back with the heddle turned open facing me. Oh, that's much better. Pull it through. And you're wondering, why am I not using a heddle hook? Because I lost it. I can't seem to find the thing. And I refuse to buy something when I know I have it around here. And I do have a little crochet hook that I use, too, and I can't seem to find that. It's probably with the rigid heddle loop. And then, two, I can't get the shot close enough in unless I'm holding the camera. So I can't really hold the camera and, and use the hook at the same time. But if, if you're getting a little hitch... If your heddles are, are moving while you're weaving and you have to kind of stop and jiggle them around, you might want to make sure that you're putting your yarn in in the correct way if you have the same kind of heddles I do. Like I said, if you have the inserted eye heddles, it doesn't matter. But with these ones, uh, they have this twisted, uh, this twisted, let's see if you can see that really good. Oh, I'm going to turn. And so there's actually a hitch if you stick it in the wrong way. Okay, so you want to know how the Angora is going. It's going just fine. I just made my first, um, I just advanced it. This is my first advance. And... I haven't had any problem with the warp thread. Everything's just fine. No problems here. Neither the heddles nor the reed. I am beating with the reed. 
So neither the heathers nor the reed is shredding the angora at all. Matter of fact, not only is it not shredding the angora, but it's not even raising the halo on the tighter spun parts of the angora. Uh, over here, oh boy, I want to say this was the English. The English has got a little halo rising up. Uh, oh no, actually, no, this is a slightly bulkier French right there. It's got a little halo rising up. That's not a big deal. And there's a little neck in the fiber of the French right there. I can just pull that right out. Look how short that is. Um, piece I didn't catch. And that came up, but otherwise, it's doing just fine. It's not rock. Well, maybe it is rock solid tension. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty tight tension right there. So, you know, I'm using pretty good tension. And everything is going pretty well. You can see that pattern coming out nicely. The next time I turn the video on, I will have completely finished the piece. And then um, after that, the segment after that, I will have washed it and folded. Okay, so I'll get back to this video as soon as I finished the piece. All right, so here it is. It's off the loom. And of course, the most important part of the weaving process for me, of course, is the finishing process because the fabric, it's not really good fabric until after it's been finished, after it's been full. So I'm going to take it, give it a little hot water bath, and then you'll see it again after it dries out.